Good afternoon, everybody. It is meteorologist Aiden's Wife Forecast, and welcome back to the update, guys. As you can tell, we are going to be continuing through my new tradition, fall and winter week again, the first week of August. I'm going to be doing a whole lot of weather-related updates on fall and winter because I know a lot of you guys like to know about these things way ahead of time, So, and I understand that, too. So, again, this is the third day of this new tradition, and I'm going to be doing my Third preliminary fall forecast, guys, because I've gotten a whole lot of questions on tropical updates about when's my fall and winter. My winter forecast will come out the 7th of August. That's the first day of school for me. So, again, it might change to the 6th of August or the 8th, but I'm planning on having the 7th. But yeah, but guys, be, uh, before we get to the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want new updates, guys. And again, also a shout out to Insight Weather. I know you guys. Haven't really, uh, we haven't done that in a whole long time, guys. We just had a little things, but a shout out to Insight Weather. We started talking a couple uh, days ago now, so again, we are going to be possibly, possibly, maybe doing some more collabs like I'm doing with DTU again. It's just we need to wait. Be yeah, a shout out to him, guys. Check out his channel too. Also, again, be sure to like the video so it lets me know you like that. So, guys, if you guys want to know what's going to happen this fall in your area, stay tuned. Alright guys, so as you can tell, we're going to be looking at the Enzo Outlook for the fall and winter. Uh, we're, first, we're going to be looking at the summary really quick. I know most of you guys already know exactly what it shows, but again, I have a lot of new viewers in every video, so I just want to keep on showing the same things. Again, it does update somewhat around every week. So again, we do have an El Nino present right now. It's more of a weak El Nino right now. It's very, very weak. It's going to be a neutral very soon. You're actually going to find out exactly what these are, El Nino, La Nina, and neutral. Because, again, a couple years ago, I did not, did not know exactly what that was. I just thought it meant boy and girl since I speak Spanish, but I find out a whole lot. Again, so the equatorial sea surface temperatures, or SSTs, are above average across most of the Pacific Ocean. So that is exactly what you want to see in El Nino. But exactly, it's not a whole lot of warm water. You're going to see that when we look at the water anomalies here very soon into the video. But we do have very, very warm water across parts of the central uh, part of Pacific. It's very widespread, but it's actually not too much for an El Nino. Really, It's very weak, and it's starting to weaken as, as we go on really in the next couple weeks. As we can tell, a transition from an El Nino to an ENZ neutral is expected in the next month or two, with Enzo neutral most likely to continue through the northern hemisphere in fall and winter. So again, it is expected within September to have neutral, so right before the fall months start to begin, we will have the neutral and it is most likely to continue as we go on in the northern hemisphere, which is again North America four parts of winter and fall. So we're going to base our forecast based on what Enzo shows. Uh, so basically, again, it is showing a neutral. So for the people who don't know what an El Nino and La Nina is, we're going to give a quick definition here. So an El Nino is characterized by a positive ONI, greater than, which is greater than or equal to plus 0 0.5 Celsius. So you're going to, if you guys are wondering what these, these numbers mean, you're going to see these numbers in a couple slides from now, and you probably most likely understand exactly. So anything above them plus 0 0.5 Celsius is an El Nino, and then La Nina is the opposite. It's characterized by a negative ONI, less than or equal to negative 0 0.5 Celsius. So it's going to be a, a negative, so anything less than negative 0 0.5 Celsius is in La Nina. And then we have two other paragraphs just explaining the more detailed things. I don't know. I'm, I'm, going, to go, I'm going to read those once we get closer to fall. Uh, it's just, it's very far out. And these paragraphs and all of these will start to change. So if you guys want to pause the video and read those, it's, uh, be my guest. You can go ahead and uh, read those. Uh, so now we're going to be looking at the probability of uh, El, El, Nino, La Ni um, El Nino, La Nina are neutral happening. Uh, so again, Enzo neutral is favored to emerge in the next season and then be continue through the Northern Hemisphere fall and winter 2019-2020. So again, it's just an, it's basically showing you uh, in a different way, explaining how it will emerge into a neutral by the next season, which is fall. So around uh, late September is when we should see a neutral really be uh, like be formed. And then, again, it is most likely going to be going through the North Hemisphere as fall and winter 2019-2020. So, most of you guys do know what probability is. We learned we learned that in 7th grade last year. But, again, uh, a probability is basically the, the uh, chance or uh, the chance of something, uh, uh, event occurring 
or the percentage, usually like you say 50% or 100%, it's like that. So again, we have the probability, so we have 10% chance here, 50% and 100%. So again, those are the chances, again, probability, and that's the same thing. And then we have the model name, so FMA, DJF, NDG, we all have, those are all the models. So you guys see two color or three colors, sorry, blue, red, and uh, gray. So the blue is for La Nina, so here it is, La Nina probability. So as you can tell, the blue model or the blue bar is always the lowest for all the models. So again, very low chance for La Nina uh, occurring here. We only have a 15% chance as the highest, and that is the uh, that's the ND NDJ that is showing 15% chance. And the uh, red, we do have an El Nino, so those are the models forecasting their percentage or probability of this occurring. The highest probability of El Nino occurring within the fall and winter months it's actually about a 48%. It's actually not all the way to 50. As you can tell, there's a little, little gap in between that. So it's about 48%. And then the other models do so. And be, the average really is um, 20 to 40%. That's basically the average of the, most of the models for El Nino. And then again, the neutral is the highest pro has the highest probability in every single model. So again, that's why we are forecasting in a, a neutral. So again, the highest probability for a neutral is a 60% chance, which is not incredibly high, but it's way higher than the other ones. And you can tell this gray line in the middle, it's a 50%. So we actually have about four models that show going above 50% chance. And then we have about three or uh, two or three that are getting very close to the 50%. So now we're going to be looking at the models, uh, the models where they say, again, these are the numbers I was talking about, the um, decimals here. Here's a positive O and I, here's a negative O and I. So again, anything above 0 0.5 Celsius there is an El Nino, and then anything from a negative 0 0.5 Celsius down is a La Nina. So again, the models are going to be going through these numbers based on what they are forecasting. Again, here are all the models. If you guys want to pause and read the models, go ahead and be my guest. So again, from zero positive 0 0.5 Celsius to negative 0 0.5 Celsius, that is the uh, neutral. So any models that go in this box are neutral, and then anything above this box is a El Nino. So again, we actually have about 50, 60% uh, of the models do show it becoming a neutral, and about we have a 40% chance of all these models becoming an El Nino. I'm going to draw the line in between a neutral and an El Nino. It's not going to be a perfect line. Let me actually draw that a little better because, again, you guys are wondering exactly how many. So within this line, we actually have a good amount of models that are showing an El Nino. Uh, not extremely, more, if they show El Nino, it's going to be weak at uh, 1.0. And then we have zero models showing become a La Nina. So again, anything in between those are a neutral. Now we're going to be looking at the uh, water analysis or the water anomaly. So again, here we have anything in this light orange to the red is a El Nino, and anything from the light blue to a dark blue is a La Nina. So again, it's actually like a La Nada right now, which is nothing really, so like a neutral. But I want to say it's more of a neutral now, but again, it is still a weak El Nino, so I can't exactly say it is. It's because we have these huge warm water areas next to a Hawaii, and then part, it's very widespread from the central part of uh, the Pacific to the western part of the Pacific there next to the uh, Japan and we the only thing that's really really messing this up is we have a, a little area that's cold water from the coast of South America that's actually spreading towards south uh, toward the central part of the Pacific so if we had that, that cool water be closer to the coast of South America that would be an El Nino Madokai but again, it's just very unorganized right now. It's more like a nadada, which is a neutral, really. It, it, just in Spanish, really, what they say. Again, if we did not have this, really, it would most likely be a weak, weak El Nino. It's just not enough warm water and not enough cold water. If we had more cold water off into the central, it would be most likely in La Nina. And if we had the warmer waters off the coast of South America, it would look like an El, La Nina. So now that we look at that, we're going to be looking at the El Nino pattern. A lot of you guys are familiar with La El Nino patterns. Again, for the new viewers, for the new people who are new to winter or weather, here we're going to be explaining it. So the subtropical jet stream will be coming through the southern part of the United States, through Mexico, all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. That will bring wet conditions for the southwest. So if you really want the, 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 sorry, the wet conditions, you want an El Nino in the southwest, I know. It's more of a neutral, so you will be seeing some drier conditions. And not only will it bring some wet conditions, it was actually bringing some cold, some cool conditions. We will have that polar jet dip more to the south. 
and we'll have that again. We will have that ridge blocking the warm wa uh, the warm air again through the northern part of the country. So that will bring. If you really want very cold conditions for, for the deep south, you won't want an El Nino. But again, even in the southeast, you can in the southeast you can see some cold some cold fall. But uh, you just want to if you really want to see the deep south like Mississippi, Louisiana, you want to expect the El Nino. Here, so again, it will bring warmer conditions out here for parts of the northern plains here and drier conditions for the Ohio Valley. And then again, for La Nina, it will be the opposite. It will bring in that polar jet more to the northern part of the country that will bring in, of course, cooler air for the north uh, again. It, but again, it's going to switch, so it will bring dry conditions for the deep south for all of the country. So from southeast to southwest, that will expect dry conditions in the orange and then we will be seeing warmer conditions more into the central plains there in the southeast uh, in the red. And then that will bring wet conditions for the Ohio Valley and for the Pacific Northwest. And then polar jet again will bring some uh, below average temperatures for the northern plains. Now we're going to be quickly looking at the three month outlook. After this we will be looking at my own forecast. Again I just want to show this so you guys understand why I made that forecast. Really there's not a whole lot to explain here because basically NOAA does not really really update a whole lot they just basically what they think for the next three months is 100 percent of the uh, country will somewhat have warmer conditions even from slightly to way above average i guys i 100 percent disagree with this uh i i do agree with the um the warmer here for parts of this uh, uh southwest but not that warm again there was not a whole lot i want to see on this i just wanted because you i, I want to know if you guys brought up the NOAA saying it's going to be warm not cold uh, that's why I brought it up. So now, time for my forecast. This is my general forecast here, guys. We have a, a couple colors here, and then we're, I'm going to be explaining what these colors mean. So, in the red color, we do have tropical concerns. So, we have all the way from southern Virginia, all the way to the Corpus Christi area, and all the way to Florida. We do have tropical concerns. So, basically, all I want to say is, if you're in the red, look for your look for your area. See what color you're in. And if you're in the red, you're in tropical concern. So just look if you're in the red. And so the big color we actually have is the light blue, which stretches from the New England area all the way to around Texas through Kansas. That's where we can expect a chilly fall. Again, some of you guys that are in the chilly won't be be slightly below average, guys. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be below average. Chilly is just chilly. So again, it can be not as super warm but not going to be again below average again but most of the areas in the chili aren't in the uh, below average temperatures again uh so yeah so that's basically what we're going to look at like in my general forecast here um uh, and after this we're going to be looking at uh i know i forgot to show the temperatures and the um i forgot to show the temperatures and the precipitation i'm going to be showing that after this general forecast and then we're going to be seeing the cold out here for the plains here uh so for parts of the northern plains all the way to the southern plains and then for the uh, white we will be seeing early snow again for the rockies i will expect some early snow there for this fall and then we will be having in the the light green wet conditions out here for parts of the pacific northwest again it's going to be very warm so they won't get that snow they just get that uh precipitation that's left and then we will be seeing the warm and dry for the southwest and the orange so yeah guys now we're going to be looking at the temperatures and precipitation i apologize again for mixing up i just completely put it in the wrong order i do apologize but we're still going to be looking at the same things here so again i made these maps all last night uh so uh here we have the precipitation forecast here so in these area we will be seeing well, above average precipitation so it doesn't have to necessarily have to be snow just be precip so in the first shade of green i do expect slightly above average so just look at the shades here the three uh, squares there and then you'll see it there i don't exactly think we're gonna you guys are probably thinking that i missed a couple areas in new york no guys i i, I again i did that on purpose i really don't think we're gonna see too much uh precip here again because a lot of you guys look at the real details again so if you're in the light green color you could see slightly above average precip so look in your area see where you are and in the second shade of green that's where we have above average precipitation so not slightly above average but just in general above this is the second shade there so i think we can have a whole lot of precip next to the appalachian mountains 
uh, a lot, not a super duper a lot of channels agree with this, but I just think we should have a whole lot more precip. So just look if you're in the green, if you're in the green, so that can be from the southeast to the mid Atlantic. And a lot of you guys actually can't see this color here. I know it's not the best color for the, but in this color right here, we that's slightly above a below average precipitation for the southwest. I apologize if it's not the most clear. And now we're gonna be looking at the last thing here, the temperature anomaly here. So uh, this is exactly where I think what could happen. It's it's actually I changed it a whole lot than my second preliminary forecast. It's a bit different. I think most of you guys can tell. I think we had might have the chilly air, or this. I think we might have the slightly below average temperatures spread more to the south and to the east. So look at this first shade. If you're in this first shade right here. So all the way from North Dakota through the plains to the southeast and through all the way to the northeast. That's where I think we can have the slightly below average temperature. So if you live all the way in New York City, the deep set or the southeast, I actually think it might go a bit more south than last time. Because last time it came up to here, I think last time I, I made it up to here, I think it might go a bit more south than expected. And then I think we could, the second shade of blue, so this shade now, look at this shade, that's going to be the... um. A below average temperatures so that's the second shade so that's going to be through many areas through parts it's going to be it's going to be more towards the um the lake uh lake ontario so that's going to be for parts of the ohio valley through it's actually going to have some below average temperatures more for alabama mississippi there uh, through the appalachian mountains we can have some cold and wet conditions this fall and then go through parts of the north northern minnesota area could see some below average now for the third shade, that's way below average temperatures there. So that's going to be for parts of the pan, the little panhandle area of Michigan there for parts of the Midwest. And so I think the Midwest and the Ozarks, it might spread a little bit more to the east. I'm not necessarily going to put that. My, it might change again more to the east as we go on closer to fall. But if you're in the blue, you're in the way below average temperatures. Again, I, will, I think we will only see below average temperatures for the n northern part here of Michigan so right here if you guys are wondering I think that area could see only below average not way below average Again, so there's that and then here we have in this other this first color this first shade of orange That's slightly above average pre uh, Temperature so just look at that there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video Please do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel guys and see you guys in the next video this afternoon. Bye